a car uses one litre of fuel for every eight miles it travels. Complete the table. So one litre of fuel for every eight miles. So to find the distance a car can travel, we're going to take the amount of fuel, and the amount of fuel used, and multiply by eight. So for every litre, it's eight miles. So for two litres, it's two times eight, which is 16 miles. For four litres, four times eight, which is 32. For six litres, it will be six times eight. So that will be 48 miles. For eight litres, 64 miles. And for 10 litres, 80 miles. So the distance that a car can travel is, or this car can travel, is eight times the number of litres of fuel it's got. Draw the graph for fuel against distance. So we're going to plot these two litres against 16 miles. So two litres is here. So 16 miles. This graph is going up in twos. So every small square is two. So 10, 12, 14, 16. Four litres, 32 miles. So 30 and two. Six litres, 48 miles. Eight litres, 64 miles. And 10 litres, 80. So we've got a straight line and let's join it, join it up. And so there is our graph. And another question, an energy tariff has a fixed charge of five pounds per month. Electricity used, it's charged at 20p per unit. So for electricity, there's a fixed charge of five pounds and then 20p for every unit used. So for 20 units, it's going to be five pounds plus 20 lots of 20p. So what's 20 times 20p? 20 lots of 20p. So 10 lots of 20p is two pounds. Double that for 20 lots, that's four pounds. So it's gonna be five pounds plus four pounds, which is nine pounds. For 40 units, 40 times 20p, is going to be eight pounds it's going to be double 20 lots of 20p plus the five pounds fixed charge so that's 13 pounds 60 lots of 20p six times two is 12 so it's going to be 12 pounds plus the five pounds fixed charge so 17 pounds and we can see this is going up in four going up by four every time so we're going to have 21 and 25. Let's draw the graph. So zero electricity is five pounds. 20 units, nine pounds. So every two small squares is a pound here. So nine pounds is two back from 10. 40 units is 13 pounds, 60 units for 17, 60 units is 17 pounds, 80 is 21 pounds, and 100 is 25 pounds. So we'll join this up, it's a straight line, and there is our graph. This is a distance time graph. The distance time graph shows a cyclist's journey from home to a park and back home again. So a distance time graph has got distance up one side and time along the bottom. So time's on the x-axis and distance is on the y-axis. 
the first question says how far is the park away from the cyclist's home so this is them traveling to the park the distance is getting further away as the time goes up and then this is the furthest distance away at eight kilometers so that must be the park so it must be eight kilometers away how long did the cyclist stay at the park so they arrived at the park at 40 minutes and left at 60 minutes so 40 minutes to 60 minutes is 20 so it's 20 minutes and another distance time graph dave left home at 1400 or two o'clock 2 p.m and drove to a park 35 miles away so he left home here he arrived at the park at 1500 and it's 35 miles away so i'm going to draw it as i go 35 miles at three o'clock he stayed there for 30 minutes so that's going to be half past three Dave then drove home, arriving at home at 16.45. So back home again. So distance from home will be zero at 16.45. So there's our distance time graph. I'm just going to join up the dots. And that is drawn. Part B says, calculate Dave's average speed for his journey home. So speed, speed is equal to distance divided by time. Speed is distance over time. And on a distance time graph, that's also the gradient. The gradient of the line, how steep the line is speed equals distance over time so let's how far did he travel what was the distance so it's 35 miles away so he traveled 35 miles and how long did it take when he left at 1530 and got back at 1645 so that's one hour and 15 minutes so I'll write one hour and 15 minutes here. So we can type that in the calculator using our time button. So we could write one hour and 15 minutes in a calculator. But if we didn't have a calculator, I'll show you how to do that in a second. But if we didn't have a calculator, we would have to change one hour and 15 minutes into a decimal. So 15 minutes is how much of an hour so we say 15 minutes is one quarter of an hour so if we didn't have a calculator we'd have to do 35 divided by one hour and 15 minutes which is one hour and one quarter or 1.25 so we could also write one and one quarter there that's still very difficult to divide without a calculator. So we want to get rid of the decimal, really. And we can do that. So to get rid of a quarter, we can multiply top and bottom by four. So 35 times four. So double it and double it again. 140 over 1.25 times four. One and a quarter times four is five so that's 140 over five and i can even double them again and say that's the same as 280 over 10 which is 28 so we can say it's 28 miles per hour now let me show you on a calculator 
on a calculator, we can write 35 over and using our time button, which is the one that looks like this, something like that. We can write one hour and 15 minutes and press equals and we get 28. So that's much easier on a calculator. So the speed for his journey home was 28 miles per hour. And one more question, last question. We've got a distance time graph. Try and answer these questions, give it a go, and press play when you're ready for the answers. So it's Davina's walk from home to the station. The first question says, how far away is the station? So how far has she traveled? In total, it's 900 meters. Davina stopped to talk to a friend on the way to the station. How long did she stop for? So you can see where she's not moving is where the distance time graph is, is flat. So she's not getting further away from home in this part, in the flat part of the graph. So she stopped and that is, well, it's one minute. So this is one minute, three minutes, five minutes. So between from two minutes to three minutes is one minute. So she stopped for one minute. Did Davina walk faster before or after she stopped to talk to her friend? So is the speed more before she stopped or after she stopped? And we can say the speed is how steep the line is, the gradient of the line. And before she stopped, for every one it went across, in every 30 seconds, it went up by one. Every 30 seconds, she went 100 meters. Every 30 seconds, 100 meters. After she stopped, every 30 seconds was more than 100 meters. Every 30 seconds went over 100 meters. So she went faster after she stopped. And we could work out both of those speeds. So speed is distance over time. So before she stopped, so speed is distance over time. So it was 400 meters in two minutes. So that is 200 meters per minute after she stopped she traveled 500 meters in two minutes so after she stopped the speed was so speed is distance divided by time so distance is 500 meters the time was two minutes 500 over 2 is 250 so after she stopped, she was traveling 250 meters per minute. So after she stopped, has a higher speed. It's faster.